Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November Julian here for Off Grid Ham Radio. Hey, many of you have asked about a budget go kit for HF NVIS data communications like JS8 Call or Winlink VAR AC, Robust Packet and so on. Well, I finally came up with something. I've got all the components here. And I think we're going to put it together. This go kit is based on the true SDX. I've already published a blog post about that radio. So please take a look and get yourself familiar with it. We're going to couple the true SDX with an audio interface, some cabling, a battery and solar panel to power it up. And I think we're going to put it together. Stick with me and I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the idea is to use the True SDX transceiver for this Go Kit build. The True SDX covers 80, 60, 40, 30, and 20 meters. It's relatively cheap and can be delivered to your door for about 120 bucks. You can have it even cheaper if you decide to build it as a kit, putting it all together yourself. Now, one of the reasons for choosing the true SDX is NVIS communications. NVIS communications allows us to do local or regional communications out to about 350 miles or 550 kilometers without any infrastructure. This is huge for emergency communications, for survival, radio, or preparedness. Now, to be fair, if you've been around the channel for a while, you already know just grabbing a radio, throwing it in a backpack with a battery, isn't actually what we're trying to achieve. We want to take it uh, a few steps further. We want it to be functional and pragmatic. So for NVIS communications, we want to achieve SSB and CW, if that's also a requirement. Now we want to do keyboard to keyboard chat like JS8 call and VAR AC. Uh, we want to do asynchronous messages also with JS8 call and VAR AC. And naturally we'll want to do WinLink email. Now in order to do this, we're going to need a second device other than the radio. I know there's going to be some people in the comments who'd say, uh, well, we'll get to that in a second. For data communications with the True SDX, I've decided to use the DigiRig mobile audio interface. Now, the DigiRig is interesting because it does cat control for most radios, and it also has an internal audio interface built in. The cat control isn't necessary, but it's a good feature to have. The audio interface is actually critical because it allows us to get our data communications out over the air without getting notifications from our computers or tablets or smartphones through the radio, again, out over the air. I'm sure there's going to be those people who say they have went ahead and ordered a cheap audio adapter from Amazon or eBay or Alibaba or whatever. It's absolutely fine for you if that's what you want to use. I'm looking for efficiency and I'm looking for reliability. So I'm willing to bet my money and impart my life on the DigiRig interface. It's got a Vox circuit built in, it's got the audio interface built in, it's got a CAT control built in, and it's powered over a single USB-C port. Anyway, the DigiRig is an excellent piece of kit, so really think it through and take it from there. Now, just like with the True SDX radio, we need an antenna which also is designed for NVIS communications. So we're using one of the N9 Sierra Alpha Bravo off-center fed dipoles for this project. It's an off-center fed dipole, full length, covering 80, 40, and 20 meters, perhaps even 15. We're going to measure it later on when we do the field testing. So I've already done an extensive amount of work on the antennas. In fact, I published a video some weeks before this video was published called a man portable antenna strategy. Now, rather than repeating all that work here once again, I would encourage you to take a look at that man portable antenna strategy video, as well as reading the true SDX blog post I did on oh8stn.org. 
What I will say is the need for lightweight, portable, but extremely efficient antennas can't be understated. This is especially true at QRP power levels. Now, of course, we all want easy to deploy antennas, antennas that are easy to set up and quick to deploy. But we have to ask ourselves, at what point do we sacrifice antenna efficiency or ease of deployment? Now, we say this about efficient antennas without having even considered the cost of easy to deploy antennas at this point. Now, obviously, both of these approaches have pros and cons, but if you're replicating my Go kit, you'll need to consider which one you're going to use an easy to deploy antenna, which will possibly also require an antenna tuner or a resonant wire antenna, which requires no tuner, but may be a little bit more difficult to deploy. Food for thought. One of the key points of this Go kit is its data mode capabilities. So I thought I'd go ahead and do a demonstration of the true SDX running WinLink with Vada HF. Now, in light of the data mode limitations we've seen from other kits, for example, those from QRP Labs and QRP Guys, it was important to demonstrate the effectiveness of the true SDX using WinLink, for example, with Vada HF. Now, the good news here, guys, is during my testing with WinLink and Vada HF, with VAR AC and JSA Cole, and other data modes I've tested with the true SDX, I haven't been able to find any data mode limitations so far. This is great news as it means we have a black box data radio at a budget friendly price. We've been watching a WinLink session with the True SDX and DigiRig Mobile. We were running WinLink Express with Vada HF on a Microsoft Surface Go 2 tablet. Now, to be fair, there was some challenges setting up the incoming and outgoing audio levels for data modes. However, once I got those audio levels squared away, it was fire and forget, and the True SDX with the DigiRig worked reliably after that. As you can see, I also did some work with JS8 Call. Now this was actually brilliant because JS8 Call has this slow mode, which is extremely narrow and gets your signal out into the world with very little power. Most of my tests were done on three watts with the True SDX and the DigiRig Mobile. The only challenge, actually there were two challenges in setting up JS8 Call, the first challenge was figuring out cat control and push to talk. I ended up using OmniRig for cat control, which worked wonderfully. I would suggest doing so yourselves. The second challenge was setting up audio levels in JS8 call for both incoming and outgoing audio. This is a standard problem when the radios we're using don't have a built-in audio interface. It's made more difficult because we have an external audio interface like the DigiRig, but uh, Anyway, once you get the audio levels set up correctly, it's fire and forget, like I've said before, and uh, you never have to worry about them again. Now, ultimately, it's taken a while, guys, but uh, I think I've got it just about there. Let's take a look. So what I have so far is the Microsoft Surface Go 3. I took a secondhand model off of eBay. Now that's the Surface Go 3 LTE model with an M3 processor. That gives us more RAM, it gives us a inbuilt GPS, and better performance for apps which are memory or, or CPU intensive. Now over the past few weeks, I've started receiving a lot of crap on the channel about using Microsoft Windows, which I hate for the record, Microsoft Windows for the Microsoft Surface Go. Honestly, I would prefer to use Linux, but the Linux software for WinLink, it's just terrible. I mean, at least we have something. Pat WinLink uh, is a start, but it's certainly not WinLink Express ported to Linux. WinLink Express, Vada HF, these aren't open source, but they are the best tools we have. 
Until that changes, use what you want, but I'm going to use the best tools for me. At the moment, that's a stripped down version of Windows on a Microsoft Surface Go 3. So this is the kit, guys. I've got the Microsoft Surface Go 2 LTE model with a built-in GPS. I've got the True USDX radio from Manuel and Guido. I've got the DigiRig mobile interface for cat control and audio. I've got my pocket portable solar generator. We've seen a video on that on the channel already. I've got a USB-C four port hub where the radio and the DigiRig connect to. And that USB-C hub goes to the USB-C port on the Microsoft Surface. I've also got a telescopic fishing pole and fishing pole holder, and that's it. So realistically, guys, we can't expect everyone to go out and drop a couple of grand on a radio to put together a lightweight portable go kit. We need these type of uh, true SDX alternatives. These DIY projects where you can build your own radio or get yourself a radio inexpensively as an alternative to something like a 705 or a TX500 or even a G90 or 818. Now it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see the mainstream ham radio manufacturers aren't offering any more budget-minded kits. Yeah, there are no budget-minded radios and there certainly aren't any data radios uh, with full data capabilities that can do Winlink or Vada or Pactor or whatever. They simply don't exist. So adapting radios like this DIY True SDX, uh, it's important because it helps us bring these radios at a lower price to a much wider audience. The more people we can bring to the community, the better off the community is going to be. So let's go ahead and close down this video, guys. The True SDX is an amazing radio. NVIS capable on three bands plus two DX bands, 30 and 20 meters. Integration would certainly be a lot easier if the True SDX had an internal audio codec, but it doesn't, and that's okay. This is the reason we use the DigiRig Mobile. The inclusion of the DigiRig Mobile is the component which ties it all together. It's the integration piece between the True SDX and the Microsoft Surface Go. Now, the power supply for the Go Kit is my pocket portable solar generator. And I have to say, there are some misconceptions about what a solar generator actually is. Well, my pocket portable solar generator is a 2.5 amp hour lithium iron phosphate pack with integrated battery management system and Guinness on charge controller. The whole thing literally fits in your pocket. It's got one output and one input, which is more than enough capacity to keep the true SDX up and running for days at a time. So let's go ahead and shut it down, guys. Look, even if you don't see any need, personal need for such a radio or such a go kit, go ahead and order one anyway, because if we don't support these guys who are building radios like the True SDX, you know, there won't be any motivation for anyone to uh, design and manufacture these kits or radios in the future. We need to support them. And at the end of the day, it's actually a great radio to have as a spare or a backup or something that's just kicking around in your backpack just in case you need it. True SDX wire antenna, small battery pack, and your mobile phone or tablet, that's about all you need. And there we have it. Look guys, if you're one of my YouTube members or patrons or anyone else helping to support this channel or the blog, you're absolutely awesome and I couldn't do it without you. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please leave me a comment, a thumbs up, or even a super thanks to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or some place where other operators might enjoy it. All right, guys, rock and roll. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Ciao.